like, comment, and subscribe for more content. What's up, guys? Welcome to this edition of a Funko Popcast. It is the June 2019 edition, and man, what a great month it is for different exclusives, or different pops in general. Sure is. Yeah. So, before that we get on to the announcements, we're going to kind of talk about our experience when we were at Niagara Falls Comic Con, uh, I think it was two weekends ago now. That was the June 7th to June 9th weekend. It was, it was a, why don't you start on it? What is it, what has it been for you? How many Comic Cons have you been to, Niagara Falls? Yeah, it's probably four. I've been to every Niagara Falls Comic Con since 2015, so. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's been about four, maybe, maybe five. I don't know. We've been there before. This is probably the best year for uh, Comic Con for me, just because I had a lot more money, like disposable income to spend this year. So that made it very good. I, I picked up, what, 11 pops, I believe it was? Yeah, you picked up a lot. And, yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly how much detail you want me to go into about the uh, trip here, but... I was just going to go into, like, yeah, it was, like, a lot of great grails. Oh, yeah. There, there's never been so many grails at Niagara Falls Comic Con than we've seen. There was, like... I forget what, there was like a Spider-Man there that was like $1,200. Yeah, Top Pops talked about that in his video. And then like, you weren't, there, you were only there on the Friday, but when when I was there all weekend, I think it was the Saturday, I found Rorschach. Yeah, you, which, you sent me a picture of that. Yeah, there. and I'm like, wow, this is, this is sweet. A lot of, it was a great weekend. I'll put, I'll put the photo up right now. The both of us had a photo with Top Pops. And it was a pretty cool photo. I shared it on our Instagram page, which you can follow at a Funko Popcast. And it's the three of us. We're just chilling there, you know. Cool photo with the Top Pop shirts on, all three of us. And he even shared it on his story. And we were featured on not only his Instagram story and Instagram post, but we were actually featured on one of his videos. Oh, the yeah. both of us. Actually, I kind of was there twice. He did the clip of the mystery box unboxing. <laughs> the mystery bag with the Al Bundy pop that I ended up getting out. And then we we're kind of in the background for one of his parts, that same booth with like the $1,200 pop. You and I are like in the background there. I think our buddy Robbie caught that and I didn't catch that. I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. So both of us were in the video. You were a part of just a separate photo when you got that Vince McMahon chase yeah. from yeah. his, which that was cool. Yeah, but, good, great way to start the day off, five minutes into the con and boom. Pulling a mystery bag, Chase Vince McMahon that I've been looking for for a while. Yeah, that was a it was a great weekend for me, especially because I got to meet the man that got me into the wrestling business for sure, the one who Eugene, <laughs> Eugene, yeah, okay, the Undertaker, and it was an awesome time meeting him. He's very nice, especially since you know he had I wouldn't I wouldn't say a great match two nights before in Saudi Arabia, but it was what it was and it was an awesome time uh, and i will never forget that memory now i'm gonna go on to this like cool dream i had it was like a couple days after i had this dream about like where we had a booth oh, okay. at niagara falls comic-con it was like a funko popcast booth and like we would like be selling pops but like during the con we'd actually be recording a podcast oh cool and like and at this time, I'm hopefully, at around this time, if this was actually a thing, I would have, like, my own, like, MacBook where we could just record from, like, iMovie. But then we'd also have, like, snowball, like, three snowball mics okay. so that, like, me, you, and, like, if someone came up to the booth, we can just, like, yeah, you want to join our podcast for a bit? And then, like, fans get to, like, join the podcast and talk about how their experience at Comic-Con is and all that. And you do that, like, all three days. And it was, like, I thought it was pretty cool. Maybe That's one. actually a pretty good idea. Yeah. Maybe one year. Yeah. Maybe one year, depending on how the podcast goes in the next few years. But now we're going to move on, finally, to our June announcements, at least the majority of them. We're recording this on June the... Is it the 26th or the 27th? I think it's 26th. 
Originally, June 1st would have been that Steve with Sunday pop that's exclusive to Baskin Robbins, but we're not going to mention that because we talked about that on the last podcast. God damn it, pal. But the first pop that we're actually going to talk about, and it was rumored for at least a week before it got officially announced, the Target exclusive Flocked Gopher, and it was like a combo pack. It was Gopher with a hat. And I think even Top Pops mentioned it's like the hat that they used in the movie. Like it's yeah. like with like the same like golfing range or whatever it is that they I haven't seen Caddyshack, so I wouldn't really know what exactly they, they do in the movie. I just know it's about golf and and stuff. I guess the pop's cool flocked because you know it's I don't know if it's a like a beaver or a groundhog. I'm, like I'm pretty said, sure it's a groundhog. A groundhog. Yeah. But I guess you know it makes sense that it's flocked. I don't really have much to say about it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely better than the original. I say that with most flocked pops, though, just because it just adds, like, a a little bit more detail in a sense. It makes the pop look, like, really nice, as much as I say that. The box that this thing comes with, I actually really... I like the box almost more than I like the product that's inside of it. Yeah, that is a really nice box. But yeah, that's, uh, that's available now, especially since, actually, when we were at Comic-Con, someone was actually selling a box. So... Moving on to June 4th, we have from the Netflix animated series Disenchantment. We have, uh, I know you were kind of excited about these uh, yeah. when we were talking about these. I kind of, because I seen the show and I wasn't really the biggest fan, but I mean, I didn't get to see the whole series because like the first few episodes, I think I like fell asleep on. It's just like, but anyways, in this set, I'm pretty sure I got the order from left to right, top and bottom. We got Bean, we got King Zog, Elfo, and Lucy, which I remember Lucy. Lucy, basically, why don't you, for the people who haven't seen, like, Disenchantment and maybe want to see it, but not giving so much spoilers, what, like, just a gist of what Disenchantment is. So, basically, I guess we'll start off with Elfo first, because I'm pretty sure that's where the series begins. He, um, ends up leaving his, uh, town of these elves, and basically he's banned from seeing them ever again and he ends up meeting Bean, I believe, first, which is she's a a princess of King what did you say his name was? King Zog. King Zog. Yeah, so she's his daughter and she's an alcoholic and she doesn't like being the princess, if I believe I th- correctly. I thought that's what I when I when I seen it, I thought that's what it was. And then Lucy? Lucio? Not Lucio, Lucio's from Lucy. Lucy. Lucy? It is Lucy? Okay. Yeah. He's basically a demon, and, like, not casts a spell, but, like... I thought it was, like, when you have, like, your, like, kind of, like, the angel demon thing on, like, your shoulders, except it's just the demon. That's what I thought. Like, from what yeah, I remember. Yeah, it's, it's basically fate. like that. He follows her around and basically tells her to do bad things when she's trying to d- to do the right thing, and that leads into why she's so much of an alcoholic and it's a really good show i liked it i'm pretty sure season two just got like announced that the, that there will be a season two yeah there's like it will, i don't think it's in c i think it's called parts i think they're doing okay, it in yeah parts. netflix is weird like that yeah, yeah the only one i was i i liked was lucy because that's the only character i really like was kind of invested in okay, during the yeah. show alpha i remember alpha alpha was pretty cool but anyways uh, yeah the thing i like about these pops is that if you guys don't know, it's Matt Groening. Is that how you say his name? Groening? Gro- growing? The guy who does Simpsons and Futurama? I have no idea. Anyways, you guys know. He's the animator for Simpsons and Futurama, the creator. He also does this show. And for some reason, these pops get down the look of his animation style more than the Futurama set and the Simpsons set. For some reason, just to me, it looks that way. Actually, for some reason, I didn't put down when they're getting released but i'm more than certain they announced these are going to be released as early as september 2019 could be august it's around there like end of summer i remember seeing all right moving on to june 5th hot topic did a video where they announced all their exclusives that are being coming out during the month of june which as you see on the screen four of them will show up in like a collage of some sort but then the last one we'll talk about we're going to have a lot to talk about, so that's why I didn't add it okay, in that collage. Okay, okay, I see what you're going to do. So, the first one, they have a new Disney Treasures box, and it's for The Lion King. 
this Lion King box came with a pop deluxe of Scars with Flames in which there are two versions. We got the normal version, which is just like him with the green flames, just his normal self. But then the chase, the one out of six chase, is a red flamed red scar. So it's like red skinned and kind of... Also announced from the Winnie the Pooh set, we have a Diamond Collection Eeyore, which the first one is a like gray and black, just the normal one, the gray and black Eeyore. And then the one in six chase is blue and yellow or blue and gold kind of colors, which my only thing about the, the scar, I'll start with the, the scar with flames. I don't know why, but I don't know if you have the, you had the same reaction, but I felt the pop itself is better on the common than the chase, but the flames are better on the chase than the common. Yeah. That's all yeah, I had to yeah, say about I, that. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I had to think about it for a second. I definitely agree with that. Yeah, but then, like, because I first, I liked the chase better because when I originally seen it, because, like, if you, like, even you see the smoke, like, I guess, like, the light of the flame kind of, like, would have reflected it off of the, the pop. So that's yeah, why yeah. I thought it would be, like, red. But then I felt like it was, like, too much red. Because then you look at, like, the normal one, the common, you can see kind of, or actually, not really, but, like, if you've seen it up close and you've seen, like, videos of people doing unboxing, you can kind of see that, like, it's kind of, like, bright enough or, like, the color is actually reflecting yeah. off of the pop. So it's, it's like, if I, if I was going to get this box, I wouldn't care if I didn't get the chase because, like, the pop itself is good, but then, like, the red, fl- it's, it's hard to kind of explain. But... Yeah, I, I see where you're going with it. Basically, if... You're saying that if you if you open the box and you got the chase, cool. But if you didn't, that's also cool. Yeah. Because both of them are good in their own ways, but the chase isn't something that you'd go running out to try and get. Yeah, and I noticed Hot Topic actually. They have like their own. They they've been doing this since it came out. You buy one box for like whatever the price is. Thirty bucks. Thirty bucks. You get the second one for seven bucks. Yeah. So I think they're doing that because they want you to try to get that chase. Yeah. So normally, so that means all together you'd be paying like what, like t- 20 bucks probably for both? Yeah, 20 bucks each, yeah. Yeah, and then the, the Diamond Collection, I don't really care too much about Eeyore. I think I, I kind of like the chase better, Yeah. but at the same time I do like the normal one. For yeah, some... that, yeah, it's weird because like, the chase one's cool because it has the colors of like when is he blue he's blue in something yeah and they did release a blue one like a while ago yeah i don't think it's the original cartoon i don't i don't remember exactly but he was blue in one of the whether it was a movie or a book he was blue and it almost it does look better because the gray one especially when you add the glitter on there it's almost just I don't know if it's there's too much going on or not enough. It's kind of just, and I mean this isn't either. This, like maybe a glam shot would look better because this looks weird because of the box and stuff because it's an actual picture. But yeah, it's it, they're just both kind of weird pops. All right, moving on to the pop we're probably gonna talk about for a bit. Super hyped for this pop. Absolutely hyped to like the max. We got ourselves finally, and every Yu-Gi-Oh fan is probably thinking this exact thing. They announced a Dark Magician pop, and it's going to be exclusive to Hot Topic. I, As every Yu-Gi-Oh fan thought, why wasn't this released in the first wave with Blue Eyes White Dragon, Yugi, Dark Magician Girl, and I think Kaiba is his name? I yeah, forget. Kaiba. It's been, yeah, Ka- Kaiba. Yeah, it's been a while since I've watched that, but... I mean, I think I know why, because they knew Dark Magician would be a good seller, so then instead of making a common, they make you want to go to a different retailer. Yeah, but at that, I feel like even if they put Dark Magician in the original set, it would have sold very well, and if they would have put Dark Magician Girl as the Hot Topic exclusive, that would also sell really well. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think. But your initial thoughts on this? Great pop. Amazing pop. Yu-Gi-Oh has been part of my life for as long as I can remember, so uh, it's really cool to see someone like this. I I really want to see a 
six inch or maybe even a ten inch summon skull. That would be a really cool. Prop. It, it's is it summon sc- no not summon skull. It's not summon skull. The one I was saying, what's the one where when you played Yu Gi Oh you needed like five cards because it's like oh, a part of the Exodia. Yeah, that would I be thought really cool I too. thought of I thought like remember like in WWE figures you'd have the build a figure. Uh-huh. But, like, they sold, like, five different pops where, like, it's meant to be unboxed because then you build the pop. Funko, I really hope you guys are listening to this podcast. This guy's got something going on here. <laughs> he makes so much money. Like, all right. Do you imagine just, like, calling build Hot Top? Imagine, yeah, imagine going to, like, a, like a Hot Top or, like, calling Hot Topic and it's just like, Hi, I'm wondering if you guys have Exodia's left arm in today? <laughs> Wait, oh, so you're saying you have to, you're buying just each piece. Yes, and then you take, like, you have to take out a box, so you oh, build it, it's meant to be an out of box. I thought you meant it was like the WWE figures where it comes with another pop, like you bought, you that could work it too. with a leg. That, that could work. Wow. Wow. Anyways, back to Dark Magician. It looks really good. It, re- it really does. There's no glam shot for, th- for it, is there? There, there might be, but I don't think I could have... I, I found it at huh. the time that I got this photo. Either way, it's so nice. You got, like, the three different colors of purples in there. His staff looks really good. Hopefully, when it comes out, not too many of them are, like, bent or whatever, because sometimes that happens with, like, thin items. They bend. Yeah, I think Funko, though, has, like, improved that. Especially, yeah, uh, in the last few years, especially with the plastic, Star Wars. Yeah. The Star Wars pops used to warp so much with the lightsabers, but yeah. they made it more thicker so that now it doesn't bend so much. Yeah, so it might like, be this. Uh, like, if you get a female pop and take it out of the box, like, the legs are so skinny that, like, it just falls over all the time. But yeah, what do you have to say about this pop? I think you took the words out of my mouth, basically. Yeah. It's just it's so good. But, okay, so now, I should have said, so the, the Lion King boxes came out on June 13th. The Eeyores came out last Thursday, as we record this, June 20th. And actually, Dark Magician, as we record this, releases tomorrow Are you at Hot Topic. All right, so anyways, moving on. And this will probably be a collage too. June 6th, previews announced their own exclusive of the, I'm pretty sure he's from Guardians of the Galaxy, but you haven't seen him yet. So he may be in like that new Guardians of the Galaxy that's coming out for like the Phase 4 MCU. So it's Nova, previews exclusive, and he's going to be limited to 30,000 pieces though. You know what? I I, I kind of like this pop. You know, it's got yeah, it's not bad. It's it's very different from all like kind of the the superhero pops that you, that you usually see. It's it's yeah. not bad. If 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 he does end up going into that that new Guardians of the Galaxy movie, I can't wait to see what he does. Yeah, the one thing I do like about this pop is that, like you said, how it's different from the other like superhero pops. I feel the reason that is is because it's so. There's a lot of good detail, but it's not super detailed. There's not, like, too much going on. Like, the legs are smooth, even though he's got, like, those guards on his shins or whatever. And then he's got, like... I don't even know. Like, it's it's weird. It's just... It looks smooth. Smooth is the best word for it. And that's going to be releasing at different comic book stores starting July 24th. Now we move on. Announced on the same day, we have the 2019... Philippines Independence Day exclusive Jollibee in Barong, which we talked about Jollibee, I think, on the last podcast. Yeah. That was the flocked of the original version, but now they got this one for their Independence Day, which was released on June 12th. I don't really have much to say because, once again, I don't know much about it. But, anyways, what do you got to say about Jollibee since you know more about it? Um, or a little? This one's cool. I'm assuming. What did you say it was called again? It's Jollibee in Barong. In Barong. So I wonder if this is like a... It's obviously some kind of uh, Philippine... Attire. Attire. Whether it's like a kitchen attire. Because it almost looks like a chef jacket to me. I don't know. I, I like this pop. I just... I don't see myself ever getting it. One, because I'd probably just get the normal one. I could I could imagine this pop will be worth quite a bit of money quickly. Yeah. So, yeah. Alright. Moving on to June 7th, we got ourselves announced Batman 
with the light up bat signal pop movie moments and i think this is based off of the dark knight with christian bale i think who played batman this is the one that happened before the one with heath ledger's joker because they had like, yeah but the thing the thing with this is is that like it says light up bat signal they they took from like the popularity of that iron man they released from the infinity war where there's the button yeah and like the I guess gun or whatever on his arm isn't it lit his up eyes and his chest too I I don't know I thought it was just like the gun and it looks like he's kind of holding a flashlight but it's not but but with this you press the button and the light signal lights up yeah I Which, wonder if it actually puts a bat signal on your wall that's what I thought that's what I'm hoping like if you see it and like you shine on your wall and then it's, it's the bat signal that's yeah. what I'm hoping and that's and this is why it makes it so cool is like the bat signal like they could have just made it knowing funko they could have just had a bat signal and not have it lit up but now that they have it lit up i'm hoping that you're able to see a bat signal when you light it up against your yeah. wall or something which makes it so cool i don't know what else you got to say about it Th- this is a really cool pop movie moment i don't know how i haven't got any of these pop movie moments because they're always so nice and, yeah, there's basically, there's, like, three, is it announced that it does light up? Like, it says light up right there. Yeah, but... it says light up. I'm pretty sure they mean, like, it's going, plus, you can see on the pop, there is a button on there. Like, it's right okay, in the middle. Okay, that's the button there? Okay. Yeah, so. So, basically, once this comes out is when I will decide how much I like this pop, because there's, like, two degrees to how cool it can be. It can either light up, or it can display the bat signal on your wall. And if it can do that, then it might be one of the best pops of the year. True. All right, and that's expected to be released as early as September 2019. And also announced on the same day is the monthly Fantastic Plastic Funko Pop. And that is, well, they claim it's purple. I thought it was pink, so I guess I'll meet in the middle and say a magenta rockabilly obviously exclusive to the Funko shop, which it also was released, I think, a few days later on June 12th, I think it was, wherever, like, I think it was a Wednesday, because they always announce Funko shop exclusives on Wednesday. So, I don't have much to say about it, so I'm going to give the floor to you, because you like Fantastic Plastic. This is cool. I mean, like, pink and purple are, like, my favorite colors, too, so it's super sweet to see that. And for such a dark pop, the pink looks really nice on his hands and his face, like being a skin color. This character is cool. He's actually one of my favorites from the, uh, I'll say spastic plastic, because that's what it was when I was introduced to these characters. The guitar is cool. I like how you can even see, like, the pick in his hand. And uh, I think the guitar matches his shoes, too. So there's a lot of nice colorways going on, and it's a pretty detailed pop. So, yeah. Moving on, actually, uh, June 11th, and you'll see the little collage I made, because I might as well put all the June 11th pops together. From Warhammer 40,000, we got ourselves <laughs> a Primaris Intercessor pop, but it's not just any Primaris Intercessor pop. It is a do-it-yourself pop, and it'll be exclusive to Games Workshop slash Warhammer like, website. It's like... It's not specifically called, like, Games Workshop where you have to go. It's just, like, you know those, like, those stores where they sell, like, Magic the Gathering cards and they host those kinds. It's, like, those kind of stores that they'll be hitting up. Yeah. Unknown of when that's going to come out because they didn't really say anything. But my initial thought is that, like, obviously I don't know anything about Warhammer 40k, but I do like the idea of Funko, and I was thinking about this today. I like the idea of Funko expanding their do-it-yourself options. So it's not, like... You have to buy the do-it-yourself pop or you have to buy like a do-it-yourself Mickey Mouse pop. They're now doing it for different franchises, which okay. I hope they keep continuing to do that for different things. Because imagine like a do-it-yourself like, I don't know, like I guess Toy Story I would say or any franchise, do-it-yourself Overwatch or anything. A like, do-it-yourself you... buzz would be pretty cool. Yeah, so that's what I mean. Like I hope they continue to just expand these do-it-yourself options. So basically what I'm going to explain to you here now is that Warhammer 40k is a board game, and you get these these figures for the board game, and they're not painted. 
they're like little models that you have to paint yourself. So that's why they made this pop a do-it-yourself pop. Because the figures, normally, you you also have to paint. It's weird that they released Warhammer 40k pops that are painted, though. If yes. that's the case. Yeah. But that's because that's the color that they are in in the game, you know what I mean? Like, okay. those, those certain characters, right? Whereas these guys are like... I forget what the, this guy's called exactly, because I I was just introduced to this game literally a couple weeks ago, because my one coworker plays it, and I'll probably get him this pop for like his birthday or something because he'd really enjoy that. But yeah, that's basically all I wanted to say is for Warhammer 40k, you have to paint the figures, so that's why they they did this. And obviously, as you see on your screen already, in this case, we have got ourselves Marvel 80th anniversary pops, more of them. Because we did talk about the the Human Torch and the other... I can't even remember the, the other person's oh, name. Oh, um... Fake Aquaman. <laughs> yeah. What was they, his name? Jeez, yeah, I don't remember. But, yeah. It starts with an N, I believe. Yeah, but anyways. We got ourselves seven of them, which you'll see right now. We got ourselves Sandman, Scarlet Spider, and Craven the Hunter. Those would be exclusive to Walgreens. And then you'll see a patina version of Spider-Man... Wolverine, Captain America, and Iron Man, which will be exclusive to Target. And it's unknown when the release date of those are because, once again, it's a Walgreens product or a Target. Usually I'll get my kind of release date sources from, like, Entertainment Earth, but obviously those aren't going to be there because they're exclusive. So I, I don't really know what to say much about the Patina Pops, but I can tell you that Sandman is absolutely awesome. Yeah. It's, it's crazy that they're finally... I love the detail on Sandman, like, with the sand. Uh, it's not just, like, it stops at a certain point. It's, like, it could, like, the sand's, like, kind of going up or it's some of it's down and that. Yeah. And it's, like, fists are different things. It's just... It's it's exactly how I remember Sandman from... I probably was first introduced from, like, the, Spider-Man, the Spider-Man 3 movie. That yeah. was... I forget the director's name already. It's, like, Sammy something that... Origi- that made those ones but sammy hagar yeah. no not, <laughs> not the the replacement singer of van halen but yeah i that's the one that stands out to me as sandman i don't really have much to say about scarlet spider craven the hunter or even the patina pops so yeah i mean i don't really like variant pops besides flocked that much but the, these are cool they look nice I guess that's just because there's, like, still a little bit of detail that goes into making them, right? Yeah. Like, and they they look like, exa- like, they look like copper that's corroding. It's, it, they're really cool. But, yeah, the Sandman is the one that stands out the most for me. I, I love that character. He's one of my favorite Spider-Man villains. Probably one of my favorite Marvel villains, for that matter. But, yeah, there's not much to say, I guess, about the rest of them. All right, moving on to what is originally the first couple of San Diego Comic-Con exclusive pops, which there there will be a couple more pops announced after that that aren't San Diego Comic-Con before we get that big load of San Diego Comic-Con exclusive pops. But the ones that we'll talk about right now, it will be the Toucan, which it's the Toucan that's the mascot for San Diego Comic-Con. Okay. Uh, wearing a San Diego Comic-Con t-shirt which will be shared with the Funko Shop. But sometimes I keep hearing it's going to be, like, SDCC exclusive itself. But it doesn't show, like, a limited amount of pieces either. So. Yeah. Plus on the Funko app, it does say Funko Shop. So I'm just going to assume Funko Shop. And same with the Batman with San Diego Comic-Con bag, which will also be shared with the Funko Shop. Which, I like the toucan. It's, yeah. It's, it's a lot of detail in it. But the Batman, I feel like... The Batman, I'll take the words out of your mouth because I can I can assume what you're gonna say. The Batman is only cool if you were at the con. You know what I mean? I I think because that's like a piece like like Top Pops' mom always says like oh like we got this piece because like it 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 holds a memory to us going there and doing that thing right. Whereas that's exactly what this Batman pop is. If you were at the con for the weekend, and you got this pop. When you look at that pop, you go, oh, yeah, when I went to San Diego Comic-Con 2019. 
Yeah, but if other you were, than that, yeah, we wouldn't want this pop. We're yeah, not if, going. Yeah, if we're, if we're we wouldn't be waking up at like probably seven a.m. PST to go on the Funko Shop. Well, not for us anyways, because Funko Shop doesn't ship to to Canada <laughs> unless you have a PO box in the states to go order a Batman with an SDCC bag. Yeah. Like all the, I'm just going to say it now so I don't have to keep repeating. These pops will be available at the con July 18th to 21st. But the ones that are shared, which is basically every single one except like one, will be available July 19th at that specific retailer, wherever you're looking for. All right, so now moving on. We got ourselves Marvel Holiday Pops. And these pops... A lot of fans are like, why are you announcing Christmas Pops in June? It's like, I'm not surprised that they're announcing them. Because, yeah, a lot point. of these Pops aren't coming out till later down the road in the year, right? So, yeah, like, they... it makes sense. Yeah, so I'll just, I don't I don't have exactly what they're doing, but we got Deadpool, which I'm pretty sure is holding a turkey. Yep. We got Captain America as a snowman, yep. which I feel like I want to call it Jack Frost. <laughs> We got ourselves Rocket Raccoon on what people are saying is a sled, but it looks like some sort of, like, maybe because his name's Rocket Raccoon, so it looks like a rocket. Yeah, it's like, I was, I didn't even put that together, but yeah, it looks like a rocket-powered sled of some sort. We got Baby Groot with a bunch of Christmas lights, which I feel like they did, yeah, they think they did that before with him and, like, the the little, uh, like, the pot plant thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, I have that one. Yeah, and then Holiday group, we have, I don't know why, but I'm think. oh, actually, I'll mention after, but we got Thanos with an ugly Christmas sweater, and this, where I was going to go with this is, I don't know why, I don't know if anyone else feels this, but how Thanos kind of looks badass with an ugly Christmas sweater. Yeah, he looks, like, warm and cheerful instead of, like, a villain, and then that almost makes him look like a, a badass mosque. I'm not surprised that Deadpool would be, like, holding a turkey. It yeah, seems like, like something the, like he would do. It's comedy relief to it, yeah. right? Like, and then Captain America as a snowman. I'm, I thought, you know what I thought? I thought the reason they did that is because one of the Captain America movies is called The Winter Soldier. Yeah. So I thought they're just spoofing that with, like, a snowman. <laughs> Ugh, excuse so, me. So then we got Rocket Raccoon. The slide is pretty cool. And then people are hyping all over Baby Groot. It's yeah. crazy. That's probably, like, the most hyped. What, uh, I was gonna ask you, what is your favorite out of these five? Deadpool. Deadpool? De- I don't have a Deadpool pop, and that's a funny Deadpool pop. It is, and even if you look at his eyes, he's kind of, like, squinting a bit, like, he's, like, yeah. looking all happy that he just made this It's picture. like when, when he's bringing a turkey and, like, someone's about to take his photo, he's like, oh, I didn't, I don't want this photo. Uh. Yeah, 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 it's almost exactly like that. My favorite is the Captain America. I don't know why. Because it's probably the least detailed out of all of them, but it's just, that's almost why I like it. It's just, it looks nice. It's a simple pop. I like snowmen. He, he's cool. <laughs> Matt's all like, Funko, make Jack Frost pops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, anyways, those are expected, we were just about to go on to that. Those are expected to be released as early as October 2019. All right, and now the next three, I'll just get these over and done with. June 14th. From Captain Marvel, it is Captain Marvel with her neon suit, which that's expected to be released as early as September 2019. We got Luke, I don't know if it's Spiller or Spiler, from the Struts. And then we got Jason Blum, who is, well, it's part of the, it says producer, but I think it's meant to be like pop directors. He's known for filming horror movies like the the Sinister series and the Insidious and, yeah. and all that both looks Luke Spiller and Jason Blum are expected to be released as early as October 2019. Captain Marvel, I think people like this pop, but they don't because of the fact that this pop is not glow in the dark. Mm-hmm. If you remember seeing the Captain Marvel movie, she does show off like the suit, but it's all like glowy, like it should be. Yeah. But I think that's that's one big reason. I I probably wouldn't get the pop. I don't think I would have gotten it anyways, considering I'm not really the biggest fan of Captain Marvel. There was like a huge like 50-50 react, maybe even 60-40 hate reaction on Luke Spiller because it's like you have so many of these like rocks, pops that could be made, 
but then you choose like a Luke Spiller over them. Like yeah. someone was saying, "Where's the Green Day Pops?" Which, no, it wasn't me that said that. This was <laughs> gr- where's the Green Day Pops? Where's Red Hot Chili Peppers? Where's Foo Fighters? Yeah, just a bunch of these. But out of them, I I can understand it's probably a license thing, but I'm sure they could have found something out. And then Jason Blum, I have no idea. I didn't even know who he was until I had to do my research, so I got nothing to say about him. Yeah, it's a pretty simplistic pop. Like, the only thing it's got going for it is he's got, like, his hand in his pocket. He's got, like, some facial wrinklage. (laughs) But yeah, yeah, that really grinds my gears that they would do just such a random pop rocks pop when there's so many that people want and like i'm sure that red hot chili peppers or dave Grohl, for that matter would love to be popified right yeah so like i don't think it would be that hard to get their licensing go yeah. go do it there's there's so many pop rocks that need to come out do more rappers rappers would love to be popified i'm sure lil yachty i want a lil yachty freaking pop <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the one thing I was going to say about the Captain Marvel pop is that it really reminds me of, like, Naomi. I thought it, I, and I was thinking, I'm like, man, Feel the glow. If, they, <laughs> if they made a Naomi pop and even if they made a chase, a glow-in-the-dark Naomi and, like, yeah, her yeah, outfit really just cool. glow. That was, yeah, I, I don't know, like, at least do a chase version of this that's glow-in-the-dark, right? Unless there's going to be one that they didn't talk about, because it's they like that, it, it's yeah. like that, that six-inch Broly, we didn't know there was going to be a glow-in-the-dark chase. Yeah. And then they announced it when it was on pre-order and stuff yep yeah well i guess we can only hope all right we're finally at the san diego comic-con exclusive pops which starting on the announcements on june 17th we're going to talk about each one in the different sections that they were announced so the first section that we will talk about is the marvel section which was the very first announcements that were announced and i know some of the names are going to say wrong so sorry about that First off, from Avengers Endgame, we got Wong, which will be shared with Walgreens. We got Minerva from Captain Marvel, which she'll be shared with EB Games slash GameStop. We got Man-Thing, that will be shared with Entertainment Earth. And we got Gamora, which is just from the normal Marvel lineup, but you know her from Guardians of the Galaxy. She will be shared with Hot Topic. I don't really have much to say about, like... All these besides, like, I think the one I was excited about was Wong because i seen Endgame. And not only that, oh, okay. you may have seen Wong from Doctor Strange because that's where the universe he's from. Yeah. Which I guess is pretty cool. He kind of had, like, a 50-50 reaction because, like, there's obviously some certain Endgame pops that people wanted but they didn't get. So it's like when they don't get that, then they just put all the hate on, like, whatever pop they announced for that. Or and then yeah. there's some people who are like, oh, yeah, Wong. Wong's so cool. And then, like... That's that's all I got to say cuz I don't really have my, I don't have anything to say about Min Irva cuz I don't I don't even remember her and Man Thing I I think I've heard of but I don't remember where Man Thing's from and Gamora is just I guess Gamora. Yeah, the Gamora pop is pretty cool actually. It almost reminds me of like He-Man though. <laughs> it's like She-Hulk meets He-Man. The Man Thing pop is really cool but it's it's just like one color almost. You know what I mean? Like there are some few color changes but like the base color of it is just all that one really pale green. And if they would have put maybe like some shading on it or something, it, it would have been an amazing pop for sure. What's weird about the man thing, because someone did like an unboxing or something. I think the head is a bobblehead. You would think it's not a bobblehead because it looks like it could be just one big mold. Oh, so the does the head like stick out like... Like, let's say if this is the body, the head sticks out, like, over here in bobbles? Like, it, it sticks out a bit, but there is the little spring and bobble. So, it's almost like the, um, Molten Man, which I need to give you today. Yes. Where, like, the head is... It's it's a weird head, like, when you look at it. It's it's a weird head. Yeah. Okay. Huh. It's like that. That's not bad, then. Alright, so now we're gonna get on to the pop television line, as they like to call it. Uh, as you see it on the screen... There will be six different pops, but then there will be a certain reveal that we'll talk about separately. So starting with, you'll see the first two pops side by side. From the world of Sid and Marty Croft, we got, first of all, one that Matt will go into description a lot when we get to it, is HR Puffin Stuff, which will be shared with the Funko Shop. Then from Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, which is also a world of Sid and Marty Croft series, is Sigmund itself, which will also be shared with the Funko Shop. 
From Stranger Things, we got a metallic gold Demogorgon, which will be shared with Barnes & Nobles. I don't know if this is pronounced Ping-Ting or P-Ting, because it's P-T-I-N-G. Anyways, from Doctor Who, and will be shared with Barnes & Nobles. We got ourselves a glow-in-the-dark Ultraman, which will be shared with Toy Tokyo. And another pop that I think Matt will be talking about for a bit is from the upcoming Dark Crystal Age of Resistance Netflix show. It's Mira, and she's going to be shared with Hot Topic. I think the one that stands out to me the most, obviously with details, probably HR Puff and stuff. Yeah. But the one that really stood out to me for some reason out of all of these, like if I had to choose one of the television lineups, was that glow-in-the-dark Ultraman. Yeah. That's... There's, something, there's something about it. I think it's because, like... The way they're showing it is that, like, even the eyes are, like, super dark when it glows. And, like, it looks like it's kind of a different shading of their colors. Yeah, that's, I guess, all I have to say about this part of the television lineup. We'll go with you now and how you're probably going to talk about HR Puff and stuff. Okay, well, first I'll just, I'll carry on with your Ultraman thing. Yeah, it it looks really nice. I, I actually, the, the longer I look at this pop, the more I love this pop, actually. It, it goes from being, like, a plain pop to when it glows it it looks like you could see all the details almost it's that that's wicked the gold demogorgon again i don't like variants that much and it i wonder if it's going to be like the gold hopper that they did where it's just like stupid expensive now i don't think so i think the gold hopper was like 400 pieces or 400 pieces and i think it was like the con exclusive itself it wasn't shared yeah this at least is shared with barnes and nobles yeah it's easy access um so yeah we'll jump over to hr puff and stuff this pop is freaking wicked i've been waiting for this pop for a while because they released a couple months ago or they at least announced the hr puff and stuff pop pez and when i seen those i was like wow that means there's got to be a pop coming out soon because why would they why would they make the pez and not make the pop mostly the reason why i'm so hyped over this pop is because this is one of my dad's favorite shows as a kid and he like still to this day like does hr puff and stuff art like he does these like wood cutouts that mm. like you can put in your lawn and stuff so like i know if if i get him this pop it'll, it'll just make his day like he'll he'll love that pop same with the sigmund the sigmund's a really nice pop and that's obviously the pop that those uh like those hints that yeah, that's one of them. If it, if you've seen the, like the hints the, of the like grass there, the grass, that's head. that's Sigmund. Yeah, and then yeah, the dark crystal pop. It looks nice. There's a lot of detail going on with it. I don't know what this character looks like entirely yet because obviously the show's not out yet. Yeah, I think it's out in August. Yeah, but I'm super hyped for it, and I'm sure that there'll probably be more of these dark crystal pops. Like, because I'm sure there's probably like Skeksis in in the show and. But yeah, I guess that's all I have to say about these TV pops. I'm super hyped for this lineup, though. And then we got our last TV pop, which obviously would be a separate photo. We have the Big Bang Theory, which, if you speaking of those hints, if you've seen the pop television one, that's the Big Bang Theory because in the corner there was, like, the stars, and you see on, like, the new boxes there's, like, the black with, like, the stars around it. So it's the Big Bang Theory. So we got ourselves Sheldon Cooper as The Flash, Raj Kuthrapali as Aquaman, Howard Wallowitz as Batman, Leonard Hofstadter as Green Lantern, and Penny as Wonder Woman, and all those will be shared with Walmart. Now, Big Bang Theory, good show. I like watching it. I know for a fact I haven't seen every episode. It's only been like whenever it's on TV, and I'll just like catch it when there's nothing else on TV. Yeah. I do have to watch all the the episodes, though, before I do watch, because I know the series just ended last month. Yeah. I don't want any spoilers uh, on that, people. Please. I The Raj one looks funny to me, because, like, he's wearing, like, the blonde wig, and, and like, his... He's got a seahorse that clearly it's, like, one of those, like, inflatables that, like, it looks like you're riding on, like, the, the seahorse, but it's just you walking. Yeah. And... Sheldon Cooper is the Flash. Everyone knows, like, besides, like, the Green Lantern shirt he would have wore, most of the episodes he actually wears, like, a Flash shirt. Mm-hmm. So he's a big Flash fan. I like the Leonard pop because, he's like, he's got the mask, but he's got his glasses over top. Mm-hmm. Instead of, like, he pro- they probably would have done, like, Leonard without the mask with glasses or just, like, mask without the glasses. But that little detail's cool. And then the rest are, are cool also. 
Yeah, this is a very... What's the word I should use for it? A very, I guess, like, straightforward. That's that's still not the word I'm looking for, but this set is, like, it's good. All five of the pops are good. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, so that that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now, moving on. The animation lineup for San Diego Comic-Con. So the list goes. We got ourselves Super Saiyan Vegeta Red Chrome, which will be shared with Hot Topic. And we got... Dragon Ball Z pop that people are hyping about. We got the Super Ghost Kamikaze Attack Go Tanks, which will be shared with Box Lunch. From the Peanuts uh, show, we got ourselves a astronaut version of Snoopy, which will be shared with Barnes and Nobles. And the animation Ruby, we got Ruby Rose. Uh, it's the same one, except she's got a red cape and a hood, which will be shared with Hot Topic. And from the Neon Genesis Evangelion show that was a lot to say <laughs> uh we got ourselves oscar which she is shared with hot topic i have no, nothing really to say except i guess the snoopy's cool you can take this the ghost kamikaze go tanks is pretty cool i don't know if i'll get it though just because it's not really a pop that i need it it is cool though it's just kind of very simple is it is it glow in the dark do you know i have no idea if it was going in the dark, that'd be kind of cool. I just know, like, the tips of the head is, uh, it turns it's, into translucent. It's clear, yeah, you can see that, yeah. The Snoopy's pretty cool. Ruby, it's it's pretty detailed, but again, haven't seen that, so I couldn't tell you how accurate it is. And, and yeah, I guess we'll move on. Once again, there's going to be, like, here and there, there's going to be random pops that aren't even San Diego Comic-Con that will get announced, but this is one of them. We got ourselves Batman Damned. It's going to be a previous exclusive. I think they announced that it was going to be released in, uh, I think it was like the end of August on the previousworld.com website. I can't remember. I forgot to write it down. I got nothing to say about it. I think it's a very like, boring pop. Yeah. It's not like a Red Rain Batman or like the, the Red Death Batman that we previously talked about. Yep. All right, moving on. Yeah, so now we're going to go June 18th. We got ourselves the movie lineups, which I think now as I realize Batman Damned was also announced June 18th, but whatever. The movies lineup, you'll see basically six different movies in the collage, but we'll just get these over and done with. So from Office Space, we got ourselves Sticky Note Man, which will be shared with Think Geek. From Teen Wolf, we got Scott Howard as Teen Wolf with sunglasses, which will be shared with Target. From Starship Troopers, we got Johnny Rico, which will be shared with EB Games slash GameStop. This one, I'm basically hyping over from this movie lineup. It's a 6-inch Jaws biting Quint, which will be shared with Entertainment Earth. And we got Derek Zoolander as Merman, which is shared with Target. And from this section, at least, last but not least, Forrest Gump with his beard when he's just keeps running and running and I running. was running that will be shared with box lunch which is it's not a bad place to share it because you know box lunch is very good with handling pops so like that kind of yeah pop, li- but... life was like a box of chocolates <laughs> a lunch box of chocolates <laughs> <laughs> anyways sticky note man i guess you know obviously fungo can just add like a bunch of words to every note but at least they put them on like at least like six of the notes there's like words on there i can't remember what they said the the teen wolf pop is pretty detailed johnny rico i don't really know much about johnny rico or star i don't th- i've never seen starship uh, starship troopers yeah, I mean, they're very... so i can't really say nothing about johnny rico that jaws biting quint is definitely the best Jaws pop they got because I've been thinking like when they announced like the set that they just released it's like why isn't there a Jaws pop with like blood on its mouth and it's just biting someone and then they did that so it's good that they kind of redeemed themselves Derek Zoolander I haven't seen Zoolander so I can't really what? say nothing I know there's a lot of movies I haven't seen and then Forrest Gump with beard it's it's a very hyped pop and it's very good in detail too what do you guys say about these yeah, I I was pumped for the Forrest Gump pop because when they first announced the first two Forrest Gump pops, I was like, why are they doing the tennis one? They should do the box of chocolates because that's like the iconic scene from the movie and they should do the beard because that's kind of when, like, it's closer to the end of the movie and he's 
figuring himself out, basically. And that's a, another iconic scene from the movie. Now, of course, they're going to do the ping pong one. But also, another one I'd like to see is when he's a kid. And he's got, like, the the knee, like, the leg braces on. And that's not a two-pack, him and Jenny. Yeah, yeah. That, that would be really cool. Or, like, Jenny when she's, like, all hippie. Closer to, the, like, the middle of the movie. Oh, yeah, I think I remember that. The Zoolander pop's pretty cool. I can't believe you've never seen Zoolander. I, yeah, I know. The Jaws one is... I could see why there's a lot of hype. That's that's a really cool pop. The other ones, I mean, I haven't... I've seen Teen Wolf, but it's been such a long time. It, it is a cool-looking pop, though. But necessary? Not really. The Office Space one is cool. We haven't seen anything like this, really, so... That's why I like that one. And the Starship Troopers one is very... It's very simplistic, but I guess that's just the way it has to be. Alright, so moving on to the next section of movie pops. We got, from Harry Potter, Rita Skeeter, which will be shared with Barnes & Nobles. A flocked version of Fox, which will be shared with Hot Topic. We got ourselves Nagini, human form. Crimes of Grindelwald, which this is kind of a spoiler for me because I haven't seen the new Crimes of Grindelwald. Yeah, neither have I. The new Fantastic Beasts, I should say. So, knowing from la- the last month when we talked about that Lord Voldemort with Nagini, which was the snake, so now I know maybe she was human form before she was became a snake or yeah, so, okay, something. Yeah. Last but not least, we got ourselves shared with Funko Shop a vegan police two pack from Scott Pilgrim versus the world. I wanted to, I was thinking about saying in the world, just to see if you catch it. <laughs> oh, then... I would. Literally just a few days ago, um, I, I have a Scott Pilgrim CD laying around somewhere in this room, and Brandon was looking at it, and he's like, Scott Pilgrim and the world. And I was like, what? Has no one seen this movie? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything to say about Rita Skeeter, but a flocked version of Fox is awesome. Yeah. I think... Uh, there's kind of like 50-50 hype because people are like, oh, why is it flocked when, you know, in the movie, like, it ends up bursting into flames at one point, so they want it, like, glow in the dark. But I feel like if you want to glow in the dark, guaranteed Funko's only going to make the fire the glow in the dark yeah. on that exact pop. So it's better off to just to get the flocked version. Yeah, the than... flocked, I could, <laughs> I want one. It's going to look and... so nice. Nagini, I got nothing to say, and then Vegan Police because I haven't seen Scott Pilgrim versus The World. The thing with the Scott Pilgrim Pops, I want them so bad, but the thing with them is that they're all exclusives to, like, something or other. You know what I mean? Yeah, we and it's were usu- talking about it's, that. Yeah, it's usually Comic-Cons. So they're just, it's so hard to try and collect the whole set that, like, I, I haven't even started. But yeah, we, we should definitely watch Scott Pilgrim sometime soon, because it, it's a good movie. But yeah, the one that stands out the most is the uh, Fox. Fox? Yeah, Fox. Yeah, that's going to look really nice, flocked. I know we talked about it in the last podcast, right? Yeah. The normal one, and the flocked, like I said, flocked makes pops better, in my opinion. When they need it, obviously you're not going to go flock a person. But, uh... <laughs> wow, imagine if they did a Pop Rocks of Waka Flocka, and they made a flocked version of them. <laughs> I was going to say, imagine WWE makes a George the Animal Steel pop, oh! and, like, the hair on him is wow! flocked. Wow, that would be good, because they did that with the actual action figures. Yeah. Oh, that'd be so good. That's that's two times I've, like, mind-blown you. One with Exodia, and the other with George the Animal Steel. Yeah, so. it's, Funko, but, like, they, they need to hire us. Yes. I'll be working with Chris Sully. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of the, like, marketing directors, I think yeah. that's what, what it is. He's... Anyways, Chris Sully, give me a follow. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> give me a follow on Instagram. No, but yeah, I don't. I don't know if you got anything to say about it before I, I move on. No, we can move on to the next okay. one. Okay, July nineteenth, the Cincinnati Reds announced that they'll be having their own exclusive of. I think it's pronounced Eugenio Sores. I think that's what it's pronounced. The pop, it looks like it's him blowing like a bubble on a bubble gum. That's yeah. what it looks like. There's that plus, and I didn't write this down because I forgot about it. There is a, like, old gold version. I don't know if it says in the photo, like, how many they're giving out. I think it's, like, what, 20,000? 500. Oh, yeah, 20,000. 20,000 of the normal ones, but 500 of those 20,000 will get the gold pop. Yeah. 
I got nothing to say because you know it's just once again it's like a simplistic pop. It's it's hard to make like like a sports pop unless it's like wrestling, like super like detailed and like mind blown. Yeah, I think this is cool because I feel like that gold one will be worth quite a bit. For one, there's only five hundred of them, and two. You have to go to the event to get it. And three, I feel like about half of those people who end up getting that gold pop won't know that Funkos can become valuable. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they're not going to, they're going to go throw it in a drawer or something. Yeah. And they're not going to try and sell it online or anything like that, right? Yeah. So I feel like that gold one will be worth. uh, It seems like all the gold ones that, because they make it so like, a limited quantity, they just they just skyrocket on eBay and stuff. Yeah. All right, I guess we'll just move on to the July 19th set of San Diego Comic-Con exclusives, the Disney lineup. Super, 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 super hyped from everyone. <laughs> You'll see the first four in a collage if you're watching this on YouTube, so I'll just list them off first. We got, from the Black Cauldron, we got, I think it's Turan or Terran? It's... Probably Turan. I haven't seen the Black Cauldron since I was like... I haven't even seen it at all, so I can't even say. So if you're just... If someone wants to comment how to pronounce Turan or Taran... I'm going to say Turan. It sounds more... I don't know. But anyways, him and the Horned King 2-pack from the Black Cauldron, which will be shared with Amazon. We got ourselves, and I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, Quasimodo shared with Hot Topic... I'll get to that in a few moments. We got ourselves a two-pack of Carl and Ellie from Up, and it'll be shared with Box Lunch. And then we got, for right now, until we mention the last one in its own post, we got Moona and Pua on Boat Pop Rides, which will also be shared with Box Lunch. The Black Cauldron two-pack has a lot of hype to it. It's one of the most hyped, definitely top five hyped pops from the whole San Diego Comic-Con. Really? Pops, yeah. It's, it's crazy the amount of people they're saying, like, man, it's good that they're making Black Cauldron Pops because it's such an underrated movie. And, like, I, th- I watched a YouTube video and a lot of people are like, yeah, you know, not a lot of people have actually seen the movie. And I'm like, you know what, I haven't even seen the movie either. So, like, and then Quasimodo is absolutely fantastic. A lot of people have been wanting this pop for so long when it comes to the Disney pops. They want it Hunchback in Notre Dame. There's just so many comments. Hunchback in Notre Dame. Hunchback in Notre Dame. Now we finally get Quasimodo. And it'll be easy access for me because Hot Topic's not far from here. Yeah. So I'll be able to get Quasimodo. The Carl and Ellie two-pack is also a super hyped pop. Like it's probably as hyped as that other two-pack. Yeah. And there's a lot of detail within that. And then I've never seen Moona. I probably won't see Moana ever, unless I'm just like, you know what, I want to watch a kid's movie that Moana. has The Rock. Dude, I watched it a couple of years ago. It's one of my favorite Disney movies. I, it's so good. But so good. Anyways, what do you got to say about these? The Black Cauldron 2-pack is pretty cool. I, like, I was so young when I first seen the movie. It came out in, what, like, 85 or something? And I'm, I'm, I was born in 97. So, so it's a pretty big uh, age difference there. But these, these pops are pretty nice for it. I could see why it's definitely hyped, because it is an underrated movie. I actually completely forgot about the movie until I seen these pops. The Quasimodo is freaking awesome. I love how he's got the, um... What's this guy's name? Do you remember what I can't remember, name but is? it's one of, like, the, the stone people. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. That just, like, talk to him, and it's <laughs> just, like... It looks so nice. I love Quasimodo so much. I love the Hunchback of Notre Dame. The Up 2-pack, I definitely have seen a lot of hype on the internet for these two. I just don't remember... What's the chick's name again? Ellie. Ellie. I don't remember her looking like a homeless person. <laughs> you know, she didn't got no shoes on. I don't remember that. Like, I mean, it is just, like, part of the first, like, montage of, like, what happened to his wife or whatever, right? So, but, I mean, I guess if you're a big fan of Up, this is, like, a necessary 2-pack to own. It is cool. They are both very detailed. The Moana is awesome. I plan on getting it just because I don't have a Moana pop. And I feel like this one just, it rounds up three characters together in like, is it a pop rides? Yes. Are they calling it a pop rides? Okay. It, it's almost like a pop rides and a movie moment, like put together into one, in my opinion. And that's why I like that one. Yeah. The next one 
I, I may have screamed a little bit. Uh, <laughs> so, Toy Story. A lot of people were hoping for, like, a, a 10-inch Rex pop, but, like, I'd rather want these ones. First of all, well, I'll just say the name. So, we got Chuckles, the clown, shared with Amazon, and Mr. Prickle Pants shared with Hot Topic. I never expected Funko to ever make a Chuckles Funko Pop. Yeah. And it's just so awesome. The detail is absolutely... It just looks just like Chuckles in, I would say, like the movies and the little cartoons. The attire, for those that may not know, the attire that he's currently wearing is not the attire that he wore in Toy Story 3. Because Toy Story 3, he had like the jean, like overalls. This is the attire he had in the Toy Story tunes. One of the Toy Story 2 episodes that he was uh, in that was made after Toy Story 3. But cool. overall, it's still such an awesome pop. And amazingly, I even like this attire actually better. Because, like, the attire is detailed and it's very colorful with the dark and kind of lighter purple. Mr. Prickle Pan should have been made probably even in the Toy Story 4 set. But it's cool that I think, like, they're releasing these two as a part of, like... When they did the set earlier in the year with, like, Bullseye and all that, that's meant for, like, kind of, like, Toy Story 2 besides the Mrs. Nesbitt because that was Toy Story 1. And this is meant for, like, kind of, like, two pops that were – or two characters that were in Toy Story 3. Mrs. Nesbitt was in Toy Story 1? Yes. Because they're in Sid's house when that happens. Oh, oh okay, yeah. And, and it's just after Buzz finds out that he's actually a toy. Yeah. And he's just all depressed. You're a sad, strange little man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the words bite buzz right in the ass. Yeah. Uh, these are just absolutely, they're just so good. I, I love these pops. And I'm glad that with this Disney lineup that Funko chose like retailers that are known for like taking care of pops well. Like Box Lunch is really good with taking care of their pops when they get shipped out. Oh, okay. Hot Topic is usually, they know like about pops and like yeah how people don't want box damage and stuff and amazon is like okay like it's still good though like it's better than unfortunately i don't mean to shoot these people down but target and walmart these are both great pops like you said like wow they did a chuckles pop like that's that's amazing in itself the mr prickle pants is really cool and we even talked about how like what we wanted a three pack announced last month for Mr. Prickle Pants and what is it, Trixie? Trixie and, and Buttercup. And Buttercup, yeah. Also, like, there's no pop of like three peas in a pod, is there? I don't think so. No, right? no, that'd be another cool one that I'd like to see. Yeah, th- these are great Toy Story pops. Can't wait to add them to my collection. Yeah. All right. Announced on the same day. When you see on the screen when you're watching this, it'll be kind of in a different order because there's a different section that's in between these. But I just I'm gonna announce these like this. So first of all, the top two when you're looking at this. It is the game section. So we got ourselves a glow-in-the-dark loot llama from Fortnite, and it'll be shared with Walmart. We got from Overwatch, McCree with this summer skin, which Matt will probably talk about both those for a little bit. And then we got ourselves from the Hanna-Barbera section, Hoppy the Hopperoo. These are the Flintstones, actually. So Flintstones, we got Hoppy the Hopperoo, which will be shared with Funko Shop, and Baby Puss which will be shared with the Funko Shop also, and same with the two Wacky Races Pops, which are Lazy Luke and Sergeant Blast. Those will also be shared with the Funko Shop. Actually, I basically have nothing to say about these. I mean, I've seen the Flintstones, but I don't really know any of the characters, or I've never seen Wacky Races. And I played with McCree once on Overwatch. I think after we did the last podcast, I was shredding some Overwatch for like the first time. And I think I used McCree once, but... Not the summer skin, and then I obviously haven't played Fortnite since the one time I played, and I didn't like it. So <laughs> here's the floor to you. Okay, glow in the dark, loot llama. I don't understand why there doesn't need to be a glow in the dark one. Have they done a flocked one? No. Do do a flocked one over over a glow in the dark. I don't I don't see why. I actually never mind. I do see the reason why. It's because they're gonna sell them no matter what. Because it's Fortnite, and Fortnite's huge right now. But it's just, it's so dumb to me. Now, moving on to McCree. This is an awesome pop. And the reason why you didn't play with that skin when you played is because I have this skin on my PS4. Which I just started recently playing Overwatch on my Xbox and I have like no skins. And it sucks. But this this is one of my favorite skins. I love all of the summer skins because they're so comedic. So basically McCree is a cowboy 
and now he's a um, a lifeguard in with this skin and his his belt normally says BAMF, which stands for badass mother blank. You guys could assume what it is. And then they change it to SAMF, which is Sandy Ass Mother Blank, which is it's hilarious. I can't wait for this pop. You said it's going to E B obviously, right? Yes, it's gonna be shared with E B games slash game stuff. Yeah, sweet. I can't wait for this pop. The Flintstones ones are really cool, actually. And then the Wacky Racer ones, actually, the, what's this guy's name here? That's Lazy Luke. Lazy Luke. That That's a cool-looking pop, actually. I really like that one. But yeah, I guess that's all I have to say about this set so far. And then, okay, so then in between what would have been the games announcement and the Hanna-Barbera announcements is the DC Comics lineup, or as they always like to put, Pop Heroes, which... I don't know why they do that, considering they have a Marvel lineup, and that's also Heroes, so yeah. I guess they should just start doing DC, like, writing DC. Well, it's because they started with DC, right? Funko? Wasn't, like... That's that, right, they Batman did start... Batman was, like, one of the first pops Batman ever. Batman was probably the first pop. Yeah. And then Superman and that, but... Yeah, so, anyways, we got ourselves totally Matt's favorites. Teal of Batman, <laughs> shared with EB Games slash GameStop. We got Cisco Ramon from The Flash, which will be shared with Hot Topic. And we got an unmasked version of Kato from Green Hornet, which will be shared with Toy Tokyo. I got nothing to say about Teal Chrome Batman, because obviously it's we're, we're not the greatest fans of Chrome. Unless you're one of our buddies who really likes Chrome Pops for some reason, who will be left unnamed, but he knows who he is if he listens to this podcast. And then... I got nothing to say about because I don't really, I don't watch any of the the shows, or movies. Yeah, well, The Flash is a show, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the last two pops are uh, decent, especially if you're a collector of either, or just DC ones in general. The Chrome, I know there's a certain YouTuber who I watch who will definitely be super hyped to try and find this pop because he and his girlfriend collect like all of the Batman pops. He, like, makes it, like, a challenge to, like, own all of them. All right, moving on. June 20th now. This is kind of, like, miscellaneous, I would call it, because it's a mix of a bunch of ones even they miss. Like, they got a television anime, or, like, an animation one they got. But in the photo you'll be looking at, we got ourselves three pops from Disenchantment, which we talked about earlier. We got Bean with her dress, and it's, like, a little muddy on the bottom. And that'll be shared with Barnes & Noble's. We got, from the Otter Pops, and it's like an Ad Icons lineup, Louis Blue Raspberry, which will be exclusive at San Diego Comic-Con and will be limited to 1,000 pieces. And then we got ourselves, and I feel like this one is probably Top Pop's favorite announcement of the whole thing, is Peter Pez, which will be shared with Toy Tokyo. Peter Pez is very detailed. Obviously, it's a clown. It should be detailed. And he's even holding a Pez, which makes it cool. Luckily, I'm not a fan of these Otter Pops, so, like, I don't have to worry about, you know, trying to find a Louis Blue for, like, $400 on eBay. Yeah. Because uh, it's only a 1,000 pieces. And then, being, like like I said earlier, I'm not really the biggest fan of Disenchantment, so I'm not probably not going to get the Bean with Dress. Yeah, I mean, I'll probably get the Bean with Dress, just because I want to fill out that set of five Pops, I believe, that have been announced now for it. The Otter Pop, they're scented, right? They're like strawberry shortcakes, right? I don't think so. Really? Should be, though. That sounds cool. Like, Yeah, I, I for some reason I thought that's how they were. What is Otter Pops? Is it just a thing that Funko made? Otter Pops is, I think, a brand of, like, Freezies or Popsicles. And oh. those are, like, the mascots for, like, the flavors. Okay, I see. But, yeah, the Peter Pies. This Pop is freaking wicked to me. Like you said, he's holding a Pez, but not only is he holding a Pez, but he's holding a Pez of Peter Pez, which is sick. It's an awesome pop. I could see why Funko would do this, because they're partnered with Pez, making the pop Pez. Do they have a Peter Peter Pez, like... Pop Pez? Pop Pez, yeah. I don't know. Because that, that would be cool. Why wouldn't they do that, right? Yeah. I guess, yeah, we can move on. So the first one, okay. it's they call it Pop Comics, which is very odd to me, because... I think it's still part of, like, I don't know what lineup it is, but they it's it's a number higher than one when you look at the box, but it still says Pop Comics. 
unless they had a comics lineup that I don't know about, which I should have. <laughs> Anyways, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, which will be shared with Hot Topic. That's what I was talking about. Followed by three versions of Ratfink, which I should have mentioned that Icons lineup with the number 15 hint, that's Ratfink. And okay. I should have mentioned earlier the thousand piece hint was Otter Pop, which we got a glow in the dark rat fink, a green chrome rat fink, and a gray chrome rat fink, which all three of those will be shared with Toy Tokyo. Then we got ourselves probably the most hyped pop, in my opinion, of that day, which is a two pack of Kang and Kodos, the aliens from The Simpsons. And that'll be shared with EB Games slash GameStop, so I'm glad it's going to be going there. Then we got an all-orange Conan O'Brien pop, which will also be shared with EB Games slash GameStop. Sabrina the Teenage Witch, I understand they're doing this because they have that like Netflix show right now going on. Like the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina or something yeah. like that. So, understandable. I never heard of Rat Fink, but the Glow in the Dark, I think, is definitely the best because it's got more colors in that. It's got more detail, and obviously, chrome is chrome, so I'm not going to go. Kang and Ko- I was pumped when I seen those because when I thought about Kang and Kodos, I remember like going back to when I was like not even 10 years old, and I'm playing Simpsons Hit and Run on GameCube. And they were like the enemies in that game, so it's like it brought back some childhood memories with that. A fully orange Conan O'Brien. I uh, I feel like they could have done something with a Conan O'Brien that's not just one color. Yeah. So the Sabrina... Did they ever do an Archie lineup of pops that wasn't Riverdale? I don't think so. Because I'm pretty sure Sabrina the Teenage Witch and like Archie, they're made by like the same comic book company. Yeah, and I think... Well, I think they kind of did, actually, because they had, like... When they did the, the recent wave of Riverdale, they had, like, Dream Sequence and, like... I don't think it had to involved with any of the episodes from the recent season. I think it was just like a throwback of what they looked like in the RG comics. Oh, okay. And they just made because they even had like, I think Jughead was wearing his crown. Oh, cool. In the pop. Yeah, this is a cool pop of Serena though. I, I I plan on getting it honestly. I think Ratfink is like a, uh, I think it's like a motorcycle brand like mascot type deal what what lineup is it under it's under icons it's under icons yeah i'm pretty sure that's what it is like like a dirt bike company you know what i mean yeah maybe i don't know we'll have to unanswered questions for next yeah month. the kang and kodos awesome i love how the drool coming out of their mouth it, it looks to be like clear like it's not just gonna be like green mm-hmm. these pops are amazing i popped hard when I seen these, when you sent me the picture of them, I love the Treehouse of Horror. Who doesn't? It's they're great. I showed these to some of my coworkers too, just because like I was at work when you sent me the pictures, and I was just like, wow, this is amazing. I can't wait for those, and I'm so happy that they're going to EB Games or GameStop, whatever you wanna. Yeah. Whatever you want. For our Americans, GameStop. And yeah, I'm disappointed with the Conan pop. It makes sense why it would be orange because. That's the color you would associate with Conan. But, I don't know, they have such cool Conan pops. Why why not do another cool Conan pop? Like, I don't know, there's so many that it could be. Like, any kind of superhero, any kind of, like, like maybe, like, a, a Kiss Conan. Like, Gene Simmons Conan. Like, something. Yeah, I know they've done... I can't even remember the different celebrities in that that they've done with Conan already. So I can't say if they've already done a Kiss Conan or whatever. But I don't think they did. But, anyways. Yeah, yeah that's all. That I guess I have to say. Moving on. June 21st, we're now kind of out of the San Diego Comic-Con pops for now. Until, you know, we discovered there was a couple more that were confirmed. First one, Rocket Raccoon. And they kept describing it as Mission Breakout Rocket Raccoon. Which will be shared with Disney Parks. Selective Disney Parks on June 29th. Which is this upcoming Saturday as we film this. Or it would have been this past Saturday if you're watching this on July 1st. I thought, like, for some reason there was a lock in his hand. But I looked, it kind of looks like a lock. But yeah. I think, looking at it, I did look at it close, and I think it's like a like a tape recorder. Yeah, like with, with, headphones, with a pair like of headphones. Like a Walkman. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I don't know what to say about it. I feel like there's been better Rocket Raccoon Pops. Especially that Christmas one's probably better than this one, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it's funny how, like, you thought it, what you said you thought it was a lock. Yeah. But it turns out it's actually like a Walkman. I thought it was, like, a remote detonator for, like, a bomb Oh. when I first looked at it. 
But yeah, it's definitely a, a Walkman, a cassette player is, is what it is. I don't know. It's an alright pop of Rocket Raccoon. I already have a Rocket Raccoon pop that I'm content with, so I probably won't pick this one up. Alright, moving on. June 24th. You'll see four different photos put up, because I'm going to put the top row June 24th announcements and June 25th announcements on the bottom, as you probably see. So on June 24th, we have a Funko Shop exclusive glow-in-the-dark Captain Cutler from Scooby-Doo, which this wasn't even announced previously in the original Scooby-Doo announcements. I think it was London Toy Fair or New York yeah, Toy yeah. Fair, one of those. I don't think it was announced at all. That would have been released the same day, obviously. Then we got from the Santa Claus movie that features, I'm pretty sure it's Tim Allen, right? Yep. We got two versions, what looks to be like Santa with no beard and it's got lights and then just like normal Santa Claus with like a sweater on. Those are expected to be released in October 2019, as early as. Then on June 25th, Funimation had put up a Silver Chrome Vegeta Pop, which there was a long wait for that, because if you go on the I've website... I've seen so many people posting that photo on Instagram of their, like, cue card. Yeah. I well, obviously didn't order one, but, like, when I was on, it was, like, number 13,000. Yeah. And then eventually when I logged on my computer, I eventually went on it. Just I All I wanted to do was try to get a photo, but I was able to just find photos from, like, disc pops by the time I was like, screw this. So, and that obviously is available now because people ordered it and stuff. Then, once again, a Marvel 80th anniversary lineup. We got ourselves pops of Cyclops, Beast, Angel, and Marvel Girl, which I think all of these are from X-Men yep. for the 80th lineup. And these are expected to be released as early as October 2019. I like the Captain Cutler. It's pretty cool when it's glow in the dark. And then the Santa Claus. I'm not too hyped about the Santa Claus. Yeah. And then Silver Chrome, Vegeta. One, I don't watch Dragon Ball Z. And two, I don't really collect Chrome Pops. And then not really too excited about these Marvel 80th anniversary lineups already. Because I think the best have already been seen of that lineup. Yeah. I mean, I do like these 80th Anniversary Pops, especially this set, just because they're all similar, but you can tell which character each one is, which is really cool. The one that I don't like the most, actually, is the Cyclops, just because I feel like there's probably been a better Cyclops Pop that's been put out already. Like the original one, right? So. Yeah. I think if I were ever to get a Chrome Pop, it would probably be this Silver Chrome, or what is it, Grey Chrome? I'd say silver. So, okay, silver chrome, Vegeta. Vegeta's my favorite character from Dragon Ball Z. Has been since I was like four years old. And this pop clearly has a whole lot of hype around it, considering 13,000 people were waiting in a website to try and get it, if not more. The Santa Claus pops, the one, the bearded one, that's the one that first grabbed my attention. I can't believe how accurate they got this thing. Like, not only does it look like Santa, quote unquote, but you can tell that it's the Tim Allen Santa for some reason. I don't know what it is about it, but I was like, wow, that is like a spitting image of what he looks like in the movie. So I thought those were all right. And the, what do you say, Captain... Captain Cutler. Captain Cutler. This pop is really cool. I like that it's glow-in-the-dark because from what I remember, he like comes up from the water, right? And he's like, he's glowing in the water in the show. But yeah, yeah, this pop's really cool. I want to start getting into collecting some of the Scooby-Doo Pops. I almost did when they were still in stores back in, what, 2016? <laughs> but yeah, I guess that, that that's the end of it, eh? There is one little announcement. We'll just kind of... There's not oh, really right. much to discuss it. StarWars.com today, June 26th, as we record this, did confirm the two San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Star Wars Pops, which one is a chrome Boba Fett, green chrome Boba Fett, and the other is green chrome Yoda, which was already leaked a few days prior, which green chrome Yoda is being shared with FYE, and green chrome Boba Fett is being shared with Amazon, which was already kind of like rumored and spoiled already. I got nothing to say about them because they're chrome pops. Yeah. I don't I... know if anything gets... Uh... Uh, anyways, actually, you could say what you were saying. I, I was just so baffled by more Chrome Pops, I guess. Like, one day Funko's going to run out of Chrome Pops to make, and they're going to be like, wow, what do we do now? You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, stop it with the Chrome Pops, please. 
Uh, if you, Please. As we record this, there's probably still at least two more days that Funko can announce something. So we don't know exactly what's going to be announced in the next few days. However, we will mention it on our July 2019 edition, but it'll be released in August. Whatever pops, including the pop that is included in the Smuggler's Bounty Darth Vader set, which I know what it is, and all I'm going to say is not hyped for it at all. So, anyways, I think it's time for one of the best parts of this podcast, and that is our top 10 list. It is now time for the top 10 list for June 2019. I'm hyped. So I guess we'll start it off the normal way we started off. Yep, you can start off with MD Shady's number 10. My number 10 is... I don't even remember her name. But the Dark Crystal Pop. Okay, Mira. Mira, that's what it is. I was thinking Moira because of Overwatch again. Not an Overwatch character. That I'm just really hyped for that show. And I'm hyped to see all the pops that come out of that show. So this one to start it off is cool. It it looks just like how you would expect the... I don't even remember what the species name is. I don't even know if they actually say the species name in the original movie. Have you seen the Dark Crystal? I have not seen the Dark really? Crystal. It's yet. a good movie. But yeah, it looks just like that species. And I'm just so hyped for that whole thing that that's why it made my top ten list. And it looks good. It's got a lot of detail and it's got a couple of items in her hands and... It's a nice pop. All right. My number 10, and I put it at number 10 because I do like this personally, but also at the same time, there was a 50-50 hype, and that is the shared with Hot Topic. Yeah. And same with yours. Yours is shared with Hot Topic. Yeah. Your Mira. But mine's not Mira. It's the Flocked Fox. Okay. And this deserved to be on my top 10 list because it not only did they make it better by making it flocked since it's the bird but you know i like the original one which i think was number four on the may 2019 list but it's lower only because there's so many other pops that just blew my mind i kind of wish this was higher but it just it couldn't be higher so that's why flocked fox is number 10 on my top 10 list now with md shady's number nine number nine is going to sigmund of uh the Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. Bunko yeah. Shop shared. It's uh, obviously there was some hype for it because it was hinted at that it was going to be coming out, and probably no one would have even guessed that, eh? No, probably not. Like it's just such such an oddity pop, and I'm just I'm really hyped for both of the pops. So I remember thinking it was going to be like another a new like Kermit the Frog or something, which. Yeah, I ended up not, so... Yeah, I tried doing some research on it, because I really wanted to know what pop it was going to be, and I would have never got Sigmund, but it's such a detailed pop, there's so much going on with it, it looks nice, it's super cute, and it, it had to make my top ten, so that's why it's placed at number nine. My number nine is the Turan and Horned King 2-pack from the Black Cauldron, okay. shared with Amazon, SDCC slash Amazon exclusive. It, it's mainly on this list for the fact that it, the amount of hype it's been getting. Yeah. 100% hype. I wouldn't say, obviously, my personal reaction wasn't there because I don't know the show, but it had enough hype that it should have made my top 10 list. And it's pretty detailed, too, especially the Horn King. That's really detailed. Yeah. And same with uh, Turan or whatever his name is. So that's why that is number nine on my list. Number my eight. number eight is going to the Walgreens exclusive... Sandman. Such a nice pop again. Like Dylan said earlier, it's got the the sand that looks to be crawling up his legs rather than just kind of there. It's it's a spitting image of the character, and it's one of my favorites, so it makes the list. My number eight is the Batman with Light Up Bat Signal pop movie moments. It's on the list because of the fact that not only does the uh, bat signal light up, but it's just, it's a cool little added thing that they did with this pop that makes it on this list. And obviously my personal reaction was up on this, which is why it's higher than Fox and the Black Cauldron 2-pack. But however, hopefully they live up to the hype and somehow they can make the bat signal look like it's on the wall when you light it up and stuff. Anyways, but right now it's it's at my number eight. Hmm. My number seven is Quasimodo. 
because it's, again, it's a spot on pop to what he looks like in the movie The Hunchback of Notre Dame, or Notre Dame, or whatever you want to call it. I love how he's got, like, the one eyebrow is, like, protruding and, like, kind of sunken, like, his face is sunken down, just like the movie. I love how they didn't just make him, they also gave him a couple items in his arms, and such a nice pop. I know I always say such a nice pop, I feel like that's my catchphrase on here, but it is. It's it's such a quality pop. I can't wait for it. My number seven is the San Diego Comic-Con slash EB Game slash GameStop shared exclusive Kang and Kodos 2-pack. Personal reaction was up on this, and like the detail was awesome, and the overall hype from basically, I don't know what, whether I called the Funko Universe or the Funcat, not the Funcast, that's Funko's podcast. The the Funkiverse? I don't know what to call it, or yeah. the fan base. The Funkiverse? I don't know. But very detailed everyone's hyping all over it a lot of people are saying it's like the best pop of san diego comic-con and maybe probably the best pop of the month but i just think the six that are above this have a lot more hype and more detail and my own personal reaction was up on the six which is why it's at number seven my number six goes to mr prickle pants because it's one of those pops where you can take the body of the character, throw those pop eyes on, which it almost pretty much has, like, pop eyes. I'm not talking about the guy. I'm talking about the thing that pop vinyls have, those black eyes. And it, it looks like a pop, but it also looks just like the character in the movie. And also, I know for both of us, there's a lot of hype around both of those pops that were announced for Toy Story. We both love Toy Story, and we both collect the Toy Story pops. And those are two necessary pops that you need to add to your collection, especially if, like Dylan, you're going for a full Toy Story collection. I basically have the, well, under the Toy Story banner, because I'm not counting the original Disney, Disney ones, ones. Yeah. but I am looking for the full collection. So now technically I only need two more, or three more actually, because I'm still looking for that Walmart Gabby Gabby. Yeah. But my number six is also, Mr. Prickle Pants. Wow, okay, we had one matchup, eh? It's one, that's probably the uh, second or third matchup from our podcast history. Mr. Prickle Pants, they basically have it spot on, and obviously my personal reaction was through the roof, and I think the Funko fans, anytime a Toy Story pop comes out, they're really never disappointed. Yeah. Because they just do such a good job with Toy Story, since it's a very popular franchise. And I, I think you basically took the words out of my mouth with basically what you said. So that's why Mr. Prickle Pants is number six on my list. I'm going with top five. Five time, five time, five time. <laughs> so my number five goes to Peter Pez. I am in love with this pop. It's so cool to me. I, I've been collecting Pez for as long as I can remember. And to see their mascot turned into a pop, as well as their product being popified, it's so cool to see just how both companies are coming together to make such awesome product. And this pop has so much detail to it, like Dylan said earlier. It's hard to explain. Like It's like you have him holding himself as a Pez, which is really cool. It shows you exactly what Pez is, in a sense. That's the best way I can explain it. So yeah, that's my number five. My number five is basically strictly on hype and detail, and that is the Carl and Ellie two-pack from Up that will be shared with Box Lunch. Yeah. Is just small little details that they grabbed, like even like on Ellie. I think Ellie's the one that's holding the book in the pop. It's got, like, I think it says, like, the adventure book or something like yeah. that. But they added, like, so much detail to, like, small things like that. Their facial expressions. And they even have... Ellie's got a mouth. It's a lot of good detail and a lot of hype. And that's why it's t technically my top five. So, yeah. Let's move on to number four. Number four is the Beach Summer Skin McCree for me. This pop... Again, 
It's got some good detail. They even went above and beyond, in my opinion, and they even added his belt buckle that says S-A-M-F, which I I never thought I would see. Like, this was such a, a pop that I was like, wow, I can't believe they made this this skin because it's kind of a skin that no one really talks about that much anymore, in my opinion. And they did it, and it makes sense because it's a summer release, and it, it just had to be in my top five because I'm so hyped for it, and... I'm sure I haven't really read any comments or anything about it, but I'm sure other Overwatch fans are very hyped for this pop. My number four is the six inch Jaws Biting Quint pop. It is very hyped. It is very detailed. And my personal reaction went through the roof. The only reason it is not even in the top three is because of the way they made the Quint pop. And if you notice in the Quint pop, he's kind of like no facial reaction whatsoever. It's just a normal like straight mellowed face. You would think that when you're getting eaten by a shark, you'd like your mouth's open because you're screaming and all that. And they didn't add that to the pop. And it's just little detail they could have done like that is why it's not higher than number four. But at least it's in the top five because it's got a lot of hype. Your number three. Number three is the two-pack of Kang and Kodos because I am super, super hyped for this pop. I almost made this pop my number one pick. I was like, wow, this is my favorite. Like, when when I first seen the picture of the pop, I was like, this is, this is the best pop that's been announced this month. But I thought about it a little bit, and there are two more pops that I am hyped for more and that, in my opinion, are a little bit better. Not by much. My top three are like, they all could have made number one. But number three has to go to King Kodos of the Treehouse of Horror from The Simpsons. My number three is the Hot Topic exclusive Dark Magician. Now, for like two weeks straight, Dark Magician was my number one. Because every day I would check like the hype. I'd go through the Instagram posts and see like, all right, what are people thinking about this? And like for the longest, and even I was thinking, I'm like, no way in hell that anyone's beaten Dark Magician. And somehow I was wrong. What I have for number two, I feel like I've defeated Dark Magician for that spot. But I knew that because it was one for a long time, that it would stay in the top five by the end of the month. Dark Magician, very detailed, very hyped. My personal reaction through the roof for this. So Dark Magician and all the colors, it's like so good. So, yeah, that's why Dark Magician was number three. You're number two. My number two, I've been waiting for this pop for, I'd say, about two months now. It's a pop that I never thought I would ever see, ever. This pop is also so great, in my opinion, that I'm buying two of them. One for somebody else and one for myself. And I'm talking about the HR Puff and Stuff pop. This is such a nice looking pop, in my opinion. There's so much going on with it that, again, it's like, there's a lot of detail, but it's simplistic detail, and that's what I love about, like, a good pop, because it it just makes them look nice, and they're not like an eyesore when you're looking at them. And yeah, it just, a lot of people don't really know about HR Puff and stuff, especially in our generation, just because it's an older show. Like, I'm sure for some of the older fans... That uh, collect Funkos. There's there's a lot of a lot of hype for this pop. I would imagine. So that's my number two. My number two is the San Diego Comic Con exclusive slash Amazon shared Chuckles. Okay. Now, one reason it even skyrocketed to even a top two is because of the element of surprise. Whenever there's an element of surprise. That always skyrockets on my list because no one ever expects it. So that was a reason. There is, it's basically one of the most like perfect pops. Yeah. Like when you do a side by side comparison to the real thing, it's basically spot on. I think it's also on number two because if they're, if Funko was trying to aim for the Toy Story 3 chuckles, they, they didn't get it because it's the Toy Story 2's outfit. However, this outfit is better, but I think maybe the reason I have it on number two is the simple fact. If they were aiming for number three, they didn't get it right. Yeah. So, but obviously I'm going to get this pop. 
I'm gonna be staying up at like midnight so I can order it on Amazon. So yeah, it's gonna be awesome. I think I might already know, judging by what you've previously said on who your number one may be. So I, I'm just gonna wait for you to say it because I think I know what your number one will be. So <laughs> all right, so for my number one, I special summon Doc Magician. <laughs> this is such a good pop. I I just. I don't know why they didn't make it in the first wave, but that being said, I'm thankful that we're getting it now. And Hot Topic, I would say, is probably, like, the most exclusive stickers that I have. Like, EB and Hot Topic probably are close, but I love Hot Topic stickers, especially when they have, like, they have, like, the red ones, and they have the... Oh, yeah, the pre-release. The pre-release ones, yeah, and then they have the yellow ones. Hot Topic stickers just look nice, in my opinion, on your pops. So, I kind of think it's cool, in a, in a sense, that Dark Magician is a Hot Topic exclusive. And it looks nice. It's my favorite color, purple. And there's three different colors of purple in it. One of my favorite characters from Yu-Gi-Oh! I love the, the Yu-Gi-Oh! lineup, so this is a must-have for anybody's collection if you collect the Yu-Gi-Oh! pops. My number one is... The orange... No, I'm just kidding. I was going to say the orange, orange Conan, Conan O'Brien. <laughs> no, my number one, and I think it's it makes sense kind of for a number one. You already had it on your list, but it is the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive slash Hot Topic shared Quasimodo. It's... I think every single Disney fan has been waiting for this pop. Myself included, yourself included. Just anyone who's a big fan of Disney would want this in their collection. And... The detail is so good from him looking so happy, the one eye kind of like being like shut. I'm just at a loss of words and just anything. The only thing I just need to see is when you get this pop, how big the hunch is on the back. If it's like a huge hunch yeah. or it's just, that's my only worry. But right now the hype is real and surprise element because nobody has basically what's the word like spoil the pop or like leak the pop yeah. so it's good that once again an element of surprise hits in so that is why quasimodo is number one on my list makes sense so now that's basically the end of the podcast obviously probably gonna miss a couple which we'll discuss on next month's podcasts and next month we'll probably find out what those pops are for rick and morty and especially there was some other rumored pops that were rumored like kinds of pops that are yet to be announced but hopefully we'll get to that soon but i guess you know what that's the end of the podcast i hope you like this podcast like comment subscribe for more podcasts in the future or even when we decide to make another episode of mystery mini wars we'll be posting that on the same channel as this podcast so uh that's all i gotta say so i guess uh see you guys next time peace out peace in peace out